I love floppies, floppy drives and the nostalgia attached to using floppies and quick disks as well. And I've documented that in a video from before. But even I have to face myself in the door sometimes. And this is my Akai S700 with a broken quick disk drive. It's the belt, of course. But now I don't bother fixing this anymore. So it's time I took the plunge and installed a quick disk floppy emulator into the S700, as these are now cheap, fast, and easy to install. And a friend of mine, Chris from CP Magnetic Media, he sells and makes these. So I just bought it from him. I'll leave a link for you in the video description so you can check them out yourself. Sounds like easy peasy, but uh, is that the whole story? Well, let's check it out. So we better get this S700 open then. Four screws, two on each side and one at the back. And here we have it, the quick drive. And at this point I thought that I could take the drive out uh, through the front. So I um, took apart the front cover as well. And thinking about it now, I'm starting to think I took the long road here. I'm not sure I had to do all of this at all, actually. Um, but a lesson learned, and I didn't actually know the S700, the inside of the S700 that well from beforehand. So, uh, well, that's how things go sometimes. The drive will definitely not come out the front without dismantling the whole S700, and at this point I started to uh, realize that. So I pulled out some of the cables uh, that surrounded the drive because I couldn't get it out backwards either without releasing some of the cables. That's easy enough. So I just cut off some of the zip ties and unplugged a couple of the cables, and then I got access to the drive itself, and it just slid out nice and easy through the back. And here is the floppy emulator. And the way this works is that you, um, you gently squeeze the end of the drive and slide it into the front cover of the S700. You have to be pretty firm and the fit is snug. But once fitted, it's uh, rock solid. So now all we have to do is slide this in through the front and attach the front cover and uh, hook up the cables again and we should be ready to go. One very important thing is that the ribbon cable should not go back the way it was. It must be reversed, not this way, but the other way around, if you're doing this on a Akai S700 or X7000. This is the right orientation of that ribbon cable. So let's turn it on. Okay, so it's got power, but does it work? Let's uh, load one sound into the emulator itself by dialing it in, and press load on the S700. And if you check out the display on the S700, it should read... That's right, S612, since this was a S612 sound I was loading in. So it works. And here it sits in the rack, with new rack ears and everything, surrounded by its siblings, among them the S612, also from Akai. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. I'm Espencroft and I am the 80s. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.